All right, and welcome to this episode of Hammering Down, presented to you by Birmingham Sports. I am joined by a very special guest, Mr. Trevor Spangenberg, goalkeeper for the Birmingham Legion. We've had him on once before, but now we're going to be talking about the match that was yesterday, our 1-0 win against the Memphis Area Codes. How are you doing, man? I'm doing awesome, Kayla. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. So you were in the 18 yesterday. So you were out there, you did the warm-ups, you, you went through the whole, whole, sh- whole spiel. What was it like just playing on the different field on the turf? And what was it just like being in that massive stadium? I mean, I thought the vibe was awesome. So that was my, uh, my first trip to the old gray lady. So um, it was cool. We got to train there on Friday and kind of just get a feel for it and, you can kind of just tell like the guys were buzzing, you know, after training, everyone was kind of had a pretty like positive mindset. We were, we were pumped just to kind of get, it was a different setting. You know, you always kind of look forward to games like that change of venue, you know, that the turf's really nice out there. And I mean, yeah, it's a massive stadium. It, it, we didn't know how it was going to be. Cause obviously, you know, it seats a lot of people and how many people were going to show up, but it, it was awesome. I mean, the crowd was great. And uh, I just kind of, I think it added to like kind of the overall just special day that we had yesterday. Yeah, I, I talked to a couple of players as they were leaving the pitch and almost every single one, it was like, man, what a crowd, what a crowd. And I felt the same exact way. I kept just seeing people just fall in and fall in. I was like, wait a minute, this is about to be a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. What was from where you guys were uh, from on the bench or on the pitch? Did it feel like a bigger crowd than normal or was it like, did it feel about the same? Uh, no, I think it definitely, to me, it felt, it felt a little bigger. I mean, initially, I think when we first came out, you know, everyone was kind of spray, spaced out a little bit. Um, but then I turned around at one point and just right behind where the benches were. And just that section was just rammed with people. And I was like, you know, this is a good, good crowd here. And then the way, just the way the kind of the sound stays down in there, that little bowl, it definitely was louder than normal because the sound wasn't going anywhere. And I was like, this is, this is some cool vibes today. There was some good atmosphere and, you know, people were getting into the game. You could tell. So, no, it was definitely very noticeable. So I've been curious about this with, um, with you were in the 18, but you were the backup yesterday. How does that work when it comes to like training? Obviously there's the whole, you know, stay ready. So you don't have to get ready, but do you have to like hype yourself up being like, yo, like I might be playing today. Like this could be happening. Do you, or is it just one of those things like, Hey, I need to keep my cool because you know, if I get too hyped up and I don't do anything with that energy, like how does that work? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I mean, I've obviously been in the situation for a little bit. And so uh, you kind of, some days are different than others. I mean, for me, I just buzz on game days regardless. So it's a, uh, you kind of try to stay in the same mindset you'd have if you're playing or you're not playing. So that way, when the time does come that you're playing, you don't have to go through a different process. So, I mean, I'm but like when we start warmups, I'm probably buzzing on the same level that Matt's on. And then he just kind of gets to kick, keep carrying that into the game a little bit. And I have to tone it down. But I mean, once warmups are over, you know, obviously I don't just sit over there on the sideline, you know, shaking and ready to go with adrenaline. <laughs> you know, I pump the brakes a little bit, but, but, but I mean, for the warmups and everything, I kind of go about it the same way. And it's just, like I'm excited to be out there and regardless of, of the setting, whether I'm, I'm warming him up that day or if I'm going to be the one playing. So I just kind of, I've kind of figured out the routine that works for me, but yeah, I'd say to start initially, I'm probably on that same level of like, Hey, this is awesome. It's game day. And then I just have to pump the brakes after a little while. That's all. Yeah. It's, I mean, I can only imagine if you just keep rotting that hard, that eventually there's going <laughs> to be over there. Like, crash. Going now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's hop into the actual game. And man, what both goalkeepers, MVO and I want to pronounce his name, but Burner, I think is yeah. uh, Memphis's goalkeeper, just had a heck of a game. I mean, Matt Van Oakel obviously kept the clean sheet, made five insanely clutch saves, but and an assist and assist his second one with the Legion, which is a very strange thing that keeps happening to him. <laughs> um, if I if I read the stat right, I think he has twenty percent of all uh, goalkeeper assists in USL in the oh, last like stat. five years. That's so, a stat. <laughs> <laughs> just I don't know how he does it. What a beast! But Burner, whenever you see a guy like Burner, who I think he had some like ten saves on the night, 
and all of them were not just little, you know, it's a little dribble or two. They were real deal saves. Mm-hmm. As a guy who's on the other team, especially as a goalkeeper, you're like, man, I hate that guy, but also like shout out to that dude. Like, I wish I could be doing that right now. <laughs> no, of course. I mean, I, I, I actually played against John back in college, so uh, I hadn't seen him in a long time, but got tons of respect for him. It was, I know he's been bouncing around the last few years. So uh, for him to get out and put a game together like that, that was really cool. I mean, thankfully we won, you know, so uh, we got one pass, but a lot of those saves were, were top class saves, just one V one situations that he was getting big on. And I mean, it's always cool to see that. I mean, it's the little goalkeeper union thing. So it's, you want the other guy to play well, but not well enough so that you know, he beat you. So it was fair. I was like, all right, at least you let one go past you. But all the other saves were class. For sure. I mean, the whole time we were watching him, I was just thinking, like, if you just looked at the stat line, you could just say, oh, Legion just suck at finishing. But then if you look at the saves he was making, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, if he was just a little bit worse positioning or just a little maybe a different keeper or if he was just having a slightly worse day, you know, one, two, three, four, maybe even five of those goals go past him. They were really top-notch saves. Yep, yep, I agree. I agree. We probably would like a few of those back. Maybe, uh, you know, hopefully the next game or two we'll we'll iron out that finishing touch a little bit. So maybe two or three get in. But they were definitely class saves, so can't take anything away from them on that. So you can give a lot more of an input on this than a lot of fans probably could. And – in the past, Legion's had a ton of talent all over the pitch. And especially in the back line, we've had great players. But this year, it seems like everything's gelled. And strangely enough, our back line has become the strength of the team. When it felt, everybody said, well, it's going to be the offense this year. Just look at the names we have. The new the new guys, Fanwell, which I found out I was saying his name wrong. So I'm sorry, Fanwell. Um and then you have Benefimu, and then Jake filled in yesterday, and Ryan James has been a beast. What's been different about these guys compared to last year? Or is it really nothing at all? You know, that's yeah, that's another good question. I think it's uh, well, for the grind of the season, I think you got to have that back line just set and some depth there because there's there's going to be injuries that are going to happen. You know, and unfortunately, we already saw one a little bit with uh, with Alex Cragnali. You know, a little. Little thing happened and he's out for a couple of weeks, but right away we have someone that can step into that situation. And I mean, Ben's done a great job the last two games. He's come in and, and he stepped right in. And uh, that's really cool. And just the mindset that that brings to everyone else, instead of knowing that the level's not going to drop, you know, we've just got a bunch of good guys there that all want to play and all want to compete. And so it's, which helps each other out because maybe there's going to be a time we play three games in a week and, you know, the same guys don't, you know, there's no need to play one of those games. Take, take a day off. So we have the depth to do that now where the level doesn't drop. And that's all that adds into the grind of the season. And it's going to really help us win like the dog days of August, September get around. And, you know, those games are, those games are the big, the big win games. Benefimo has been kind of a shocker for a lot of, uh, for a lot of fans because, he isn't really a high, highly known name around USL. He played in the USL, but he was also kind of in that Union Academy system. So people didn't really know what that was about. They didn't know if he was a system guy or a player player. Man's what, 20 years old with four years of professional yeah. experience. That's nuts, first off. I couldn't imagine having that kind of pedigree. I mean, I'm 21. I feel like I'm young. And that dude has four years of professional experience, which is wild. But what makes him so special? Because he really just seems to be amazing out on that pitch. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, well, just since he's come in, he's, you know, I like to use it a lot when I'm doing coaching, but he has it. And it's kind of that sponge mentality. He's just come in, he soaked everything up. I think it's good that, you know, he stepped into that role um, with the uh, Alex Cragnali injury. And he's able to just kind of, feed off of what Fanwell is doing and you know he's asking questions than the questions he needs to ask and he just wants to be a student of the game you can tell I mean he's been first class in training since he's been here so uh it was just you know you knew that if he was given his chance he was going to step right up into it and that's what he's done so we also this is going to be the last backline question maybe probably not but um we also saw Jake Roof be able to go in and play the right wing which or right back and which awesome for him I love Jake Roof he has been nothing short of fantastic through his years here great guy 
being able to fill in a role that Johnny Dean plays, which this is nothing against Jake, but there's nobody in the world that's as fast as Johnny. <laughs> so Junior, I think Junior might be faster. Junior might be faster. I'd like to see a race there I'm trying to organize that. So, but yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> see, I asked Alex the same thing, uh, Alex Cronali, and he said that uh, that Johnny was easily faster. So, uh, you know what? I think maybe if it was the first 10 yards, I think Junior might have him, and then Johnny would catch up. So Johnny's like that distant sprinter. He's going to get you every time, which we've seen many times in games. But yeah, that's 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 a fair. I, I want to see that race. We have to make that happen. See. Yeah. This is this is the things that I want to know. I mean, yeah, do we want to win games? Sure. I just want to know who the fastest guy on the team is. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a guy who, in Johnny, who is just wicked fast. And Jake is also quick, but no one's that quick. How do you – and he filled in awesome, by the way. He had a great, great, great match. How do you fill – a guy like that in I guess you know how how do you take over a spot like that and do as well as he did yeah it's true I mean um, I think it's more so the mentality you really don't think of it as I'm going to take this over it's I'm going to go in and do my job today and that's kind of more so and that's exactly what he did you know and yeah he's got a little bit of a different style than Johnny and uh, the roof loves to get stuck into tackles and I love that and you know he did that all day yesterday you know he got stuck into everyone yesterday and and that's what you need. And, you know, it's it's really just about going in and not trying to do too much. Just going and do your job. And uh, that's exactly what he did. And he, the level didn't drop. And we got a clean sheet. So, and that's, you know, done and dusted. That's a great day. For guys like Jake Roof, who, like you said, he does like to get stuck in and just really go after guys. Guys like Anderson, everybody knows, you know, will just tear through another human being like it's nothing. <laughs> Do you guys feed off that as much as the fans do? Because I know we like to go nuts whenever either one of those guys just bulldoze through another human being. Oh, I mean, I, I love that stuff. So, you know, sometimes some other guys are maybe more low key than me, but I feed off that all the time. You know, whether I'm out there or on the bench, it doesn't matter. It's like I love seeing a good hard tackle. I mean, obviously, it's as long as it's clean. And I mean, I love Ando, you know big body and everyone that he comes up against that are usually twice his size. So, you know, that, that stuff always gets me going because yeah, it just shows that guys are ready for the fight. They're in it and you know, they're not going to back down. So we saw a ton of change in the midfield, or at least it felt like it did. You know, we were missing Mikey. We trade, not really traded out. I mean, JJ came back into the, into the lineup and Jaden came in off the bench, which what an amazing player Jaden Cervania is. I'm so impressed every time he steps on the pitch. Junior comes in, you know, Prosper unfortunately goes down a little bit early. So we saw a lot of rotation in the lineup and it didn't really feel like anything changed. What's kind of obviously don't give away what's happening in coaching. Don't want you to <laughs> do that, but is even though that all those guys play an extremely different game from each other. I mean, it's basically impossible for Jaden Cervania and JJ Williams to play the same exact game, you know, just body types and the just speeds and all that kind of stuff. How does it feel like nothing changes? Is it truly a tactical thing or is it all about let's just play off our teammates strengths? Yeah, that's, and yeah, that's another great question. I mean, I, yeah, I feel like every game is going to dictate a little bit of a different style that we want to play and, with those guys, I mean, again, it's great because there's going to be able to be kind of that, you know, they're going to, some are going to come in and out and there's going to be a week where maybe someone needs a rest or it's just a different type of style we want to play that week. I mean, for JJ, having JJ out there, he's going to go hunt the ball anytime it's in the air. And it's awesome because to have that presence of someone out there um, and you need that because then it gives room for everyone else to kind of play off of that and eco junior and, or if Jaden's in there. And so they're able to play off of those balls that he's trying to win. And, but I think all four of those guys rotating around and being available and it's, and it goes back to the competition aspects. It's great because in training, everyone wants to play. So everyone's doing that little bit of extra finishing and getting better. So like we saw Jaden come in yesterday and you know, he was, that's a great sub to have because it's not like, you know, we're not subbing on a defender to try to hold the game one nil. You know, we're putting Jaden on. And he's going to maybe go get us another goal. That's awesome. That's what you want for whoever's coming off the bench. So I think it's great that we have that depth to bring someone on like that. And uh, whoever's out there and whoever we're bringing on is able to do that. 
I, I always keep looking over this line, uh, the lineup from last night, just, uh, just to remind myself if there's anything that happened in the match that I really want to bring up. But do we have – is this the one of the tallest teams you've ever been around with JJ, with Fanwell, with Alex, with Ben? I mean, we have some monsters on this team just heights-wise. We do. We do have some big guys. That's true. So we need to get some set-piece schools now. That's that's the next step. That's the next step. We need to be – with that height and that kind of strength going on, we need to be dominant on situations like that. Defending defending them too. Definitely defending them too. But definitely there's some goals to be had on some set-pieces this year, I think. So – I don't know if I always recommend putting basically three center backs in the box during a <laughs> during a corner or during a set piece, but seeing all four of those guys in the box at once, I mean that'd be that has to be terrifying for anybody. You know, as another goalkeeper, you don't want to see that. You don't want to see those guys coming towards your box. That's for sure. I'd be <laughs> like, oh, here we go. Jeez, you know, this is going to be a tough one. Just punch and pray, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> get it out of here. Just get it out of here. <laughs> So, Nico, we finally get our first goal in open play, which was really nice to see. And it looked like it had been coming all day long. How – what was that feeling like for the team, especially just being like, okay, we can do – it's maybe not even we can do this, but it's like we finally did it. We got the open open play goal. We scored. And we – the whole day was just breaking down that Memphis defense. As a team, what was it kind of like finally seeing that ball go into the back of the net? Oh, it was a great feeling. I mean, you know, we had a nice little celebration over there in the corner. Um, but like you said, it was – that was coming the whole game. It was just kind of like, all right, when is this going to happen then? Because we were getting those chances. Um, so it was great for him to get on the score sheet, you know, in open play. And But, yeah, that feeling of like, all right, this, it's, it's coming today. You could tell we were – you know, we were doing some really good runs. The balls were there. It was just missing that final – final finish a couple of times, but, but the fact that we're getting in those situations, you know, and this is still only the third game of the year, like there's work, we are having a nice, you know, fluid, everything is gelling. It's nice already three games in, you know, sometimes it doesn't work that way and you can tell guys are on the same page. So the fact we're getting all of these looks and, you know, yesterday we haven't finished one of them, you know, we keep doing that. There's going to be games where we're having some four or five really good chances. And that's, and that's such a threat because then that's something that other teams have to prepare for. So it's, it's exciting. From where you were on the pitch, what was different about this Memphis squad? Because they looked a lot better than they have in years past. And obviously you don't probably don't need to be talking crap about Memphis, but I will, you know, you can just act like you're not hearing it, but in the past, they weren't that great. Cal Jennings tore us alive last year, unfortunately, and that's because he's one of the best strikers in USL last year. But other than that, it was really no one. But this year they looked really, really dangerous, and they could have done a lot more. Was there anything that you saw different out of the team, or was maybe it just a different coaching mentality? Um, yeah, well, they've made some really good signings. Um, and, you know, we, we knew the strength of their team coming in, and we knew it was going to be different than last year. So, I mean – I think it was their first game and you could tell that by the end, you know, the, the big field was getting to them and everything. It got to everyone a little bit, but definitely it's a tough, it's tough for them to come here for their first game and play on a huge turf field like that. So I think that definitely played to our advantage. We're a little more fit. Um, so, but they're, you know, I think they're definitely going to be more of a force than, you know, I'm not saying they weren't, but they're, they've got a good solid squad this year. So it's, uh, I think every time we go up against them, it's going to be, it's going to be an exciting battle. So I think uh, everyone, both sides, fan wise, are going to really enjoy the games this year. It should be really good. There's, we like, or during the match, I think we all kind of saw a difference in play, maybe in the Legion. And maybe I'm totally wrong here. Maybe it's just confirmation bias on something I thought would happen. But with guys like Junior Flemings, with Anderson Sidhu, and then Bruno Lapa, guys who are just world-class dribblers, just cannot get the ball off, off of their feet. They always keep it with them. Before, it was, it's been this big push. Hey, we're going to counterattack because we are faster than every single person and then every single person on the other team. The, yesterday we saw a lot more of the dribbling. We're going to get through space. We're going to try to draw defenders in and then lay it off to somebody else. Adding a third guy like Junior in, how does that help kind of the big mentality change, especially since he is just such a threat on offense every time he has the ball? I think it's 
really neat that we have so many guys up there that are such threats. And, you know, we talk about all the time and one of, you know, coach Tommy's favorite things to say is, you know, find joy with the football. So it's when we have the ball, that's, that's the best time. And when we're keeping it and the balls at our feet and we're having fun with it, that's, that's going to break other teams down. So, I mean, yeah, of course there's going to be times where we want to counter and, you know, pick our chances to do that. But, you know, if that doesn't fall, if that, when we do a counter and it falls apart, then things end up being very spread and that's the game starts becoming more back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, we don't want that. So it's, uh, we pick our chances to do that. And otherwise it's like, let's just get the ball up there and have, let those four or five guys just have fun with it. Cause they're all the IQ that they all have is great. And that's, it's pretty neat that we have them all together here on a team to just feed off of each other. And I think as the season goes, they're only going to, they're going to start gelling even more and more, like I mentioned, and it's going to be pretty cool to see. And uh, but yesterday was a good start for that. And I think as you can see glimpses of it. And so hopefully that just starts to become more of a common theme now. Four or five guys. Most, most teams just want one guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know ridiculous it has to be a nightmare in practice whenever you see those four and five guys coming at you and you're like I believe in myself but this sucks <laughs> I love it every day I'm like hey let's go you know line some balls up at the end do some finishing you know whatever helps make them better I want to bang it in goal so uh but it's great to go and face that kind of you know that competition every day and that standard because it's yeah that's what you want you know it helps make me better it helps make them better and it's just great that we have that quality here to make the team better Iron sharp, sharpens iron, man. I mean, I mean, and we're Absolutely. really starting to see that, especially, especially with our back line and goalkeeping. I mean, we've only given in what two goals in three matches, and we've gone against some really, really great teams. And Matt Van Okel has made fantastic saves. The one in the Louisville match stands out, and then the two in this uh, Memphis match that really were some top notch saves really stand out but this back line has really made his job a lot easier than you know it definitely maybe would have been in the past so it's definitely seeing those battles happening in practice have to be kind of legendary and you can probably see it happening in real life in the match you know oh absolutely and I think I think it's good that he doesn't need to stand on his head every game you know I mean maybe once in a while we like those kind of games but it's you know, you should be, you're going to be required to make, you know, three, four, five saves and you got to be ready when that happens. And yes, he's done awesome the last couple of games and it shows and it's really, it was really nice to get that clean sheet last night. I mean, we all love donuts. So, I mean, you know, donuts are coming Monday morning now. So it's, uh, but it, it was good. And, you know, he had a couple of really good saves in the first half and, but everything else is getting shored up by the defense. And that just, again, speaks to the quality that we have. And it's just going to be something we keep building on because that's the standard we want to set is clean sheets and, you know, we keep a zero when we got guys who are going to go score the goals. So that's, there we go. You know, it sounds simple when I say that, but you know, <laughs> that's, that's the plan every game. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't know what's so hard about it. Just don't get scored on and score goals. Like, come on guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's a very simple game. We don't need to complicate it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it would be kind of criminal if I had you on here and didn't talk some goalkeeping stuff, of course, which we talked a little bit about it, but I have a lot of questions and for a guy who, Matt Van Okel is not an old man, obviously, but when it comes to, you know, playing soccer, you know, there's not a lot of guys that make it as far as he has anyway, but uh, sorry, I need to catch my thoughts, but he continues to grow every single year and just seems to be a sponge, like you said earlier, and just learning new techniques and whatnot this year it seems like he is just about near perfect when it comes to his positioning and when he goes to get the ball and when he decides to go punch the ball, especially on corners. Is that something that happens in training that specifically like we're going to work on corners a lot, or is that something that he just kind of has that natural feel inside the box of I'm going to go get this ball. I'm going to go punch this ball and, or I'm going to let my defenders handle this. Yeah, that's, that's really true. I mean, um, so we'll, we'll probably have about a day every week that we that we focus on crossing, um, and you know that and that's the main focus of the day. Then and, uh, and we do a lot of different variations with that, and and then on top of that, and there's always a set piece video that you know we'll see from other teams, so you kind of you know what they like to do on crosses. Not, I mean, again, you can watch as many clips and film as that you want, and on the day, you know, someone might not serve the ball at all like they've been serving the ball. So it's 
you can see that stuff, but at, and for in the moment, it's more so about being confident in yourself and what we've done in training. And we do a good amount on the day that we work on crosses and, you know, we kind of have some fun with it with some new techniques that I think play into the fact that has made him very confident to come get those balls. And it also helps that he's a big beast in there. So when he does go get it, no one's going to out jump him. So, uh, you know, that definitely plays into his, into his hands a little bit. So it's good that you have that presence. I mean, for any for any player to have their goalkeeper coming out I mean we always want to take some pressure off of them and if you can come gobble up anything that's in the six yard box or just outside of it as a cross that's huge for the team so he's been doing a great job with that how hard is it to be able to just command a box like he does especially in those corners because against Louisville City especially we there's obviously the one goal that went in and that's unfortunate but what is it for the rest of the match? He pretty much played a perfect, perfect match, especially in with all the corners that he gave or not he, but the team gave up or, you know, to relieve the pressure. And every single time he punched the ball out outside the 18 or most of them, he was just able to go collect it. How was it take to get that kind of box presence and kind of understand the space that you do have? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely not easy when you have, you know, a lot of teams are going to just come in and crowd the six and then they're just going to dump the ball in. So it, it's really you got to make sure those first one or two times you come out are, are going to be clean and that's going to get you going. Because if you come flying out for the first cross that comes in into your box and you misread it and it goes sailing over your head and you're caught swimming a little bit, that's going to play on your mind. And But, you know, he the first goal, nothing he could do about that from a personal standpoint. And after that, it was just like, okay, this is, if this is going to be what they do, if they're going to be putting them in, he kind of got into that mindset and he just came, came out for everything that was within his range. And it's, it's really about just not trying to do too much because at the end of the day, it's, you know, if, if you can't go get the cross, it's not the end of the world, stay on your line and just make them beat you. Don't beat yourself by going out and putting yourself out of position. But when you do have the confidence to go get it, which he's shown, he's, done a great job of lately absolutely go get it and relieve the pressure from all the other guys so this isn't really talking about the memphis match but i'm just curious you i'm pretty sure got to go to the louisville match and go to that brand new stadium what was that like man i i've only heard great things about it no uh, it's i mean again it's the 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 buzz of playing in a stadium like that it's cool and it was just kind of similar to how we felt yesterday and uh just being you know you look around you and there you go the seats are going up to the sky it was cool it was a beautiful night for soccer as well so um you know it's we we enjoyed it so we're looking forward to going back there i don't know uh what 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 the exact date is but again you know you always get up for i mean we get up for any game it doesn't matter but it's it's when you go play somewhere like that it definitely beats like a it's better than going to a high school turf field in the middle of nowhere, you know, or something like that, or playing on playing on a baseball diamond or something. So uh, it, it's definitely a little better than that. So we, we enjoyed it. You're telling me that you guys do not enjoy, you know, going out to the baseball field and, you know, getting some warm-up pitches in before you have to, before you have to <laughs> yeah, play? Yeah, half, half turf, half grass field, you know. Sometimes the pitcher's mound was there. I don't know. So <laughs> I, think, I think we'll take I think we'll take that, that new stadium over that. But, yeah, it was very nice. I mean, they've, they've done it a proper way. And so that's yeah, – that, that just shows, you know, they've also been very successful the last few years. And I think that, you know, everything builds on top of that. So it was uh, – it was unfortunate because I think last year we right before uh, all the quarantine and COVID happened, I think we were supposed to be the game that um, kind of christened that stadium on ESPN two as well, I think. So I remember seeing that before and I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And then unfortunately that game didn't happen. But so it was good that we finally made it out there this year and I'm looking forward to going back again. So something that Legion fans kind of got doused straight into the fire with during that match and Obviously, I was at the match for this last or for yesterday, so I don't know if the same how loud the hot mics were, but it was just full Tommy Stone and Kano Smith just show the whole night. Just all you could hear was them screaming all night long, <laughs> and it was awesome. Are those guys as electric as it sounds on those hot mics? Because especially Kano sounds like he could rip anybody in half, and it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I think, you know, and they're maybe not every game they're like that, but um, I think they feed off the energy of the game and, you know, they're just like any of us. It's, you know, if 
if they need to get a point across and they're fired up, they're going to do so. And it's also just about keeping, keeping guys in check and also chirping the referee a little bit. You always got to do that because it's going to be some bad calls. I mean, we've seen that. So, you know, I think that's kind of plays a big factor there and that's, but it's just, it's great that they're, that they're involved like that. You know, sometimes you see coaches who just sit there the whole game and uh, you know, and they just maybe every once in a while stand up, but you know, Tommy and Kano, they care and it's, they're, they're into it. You know, they're in, they're in the fight just as much as everyone else. So, and that, I think that's great. So yesterday, obviously don't want to get you in trouble. Just, just smile and nod, act like you're not hearing what I'm saying, but we saw a few questionable calls, especially against JJ where he got hacked down in, in the box, which was a clear penalty, at least to me. And then at the end of the half looked like a, you know, possible shots of the head that he took that didn't even result in a card, which is criminal. Um, when you have moments like that and you're going into the locker room, especially you being a leader within the locker room, do you do you say anything or does anybody say anything like, hey, these refs aren't calling stuff. We just need to keep a level head and go at it. Or is it just one of those things that everybody kind of knows, like, you know, this might be some BS today. We're just going to have to deal with it. Yeah, and that's, again, another great question. It, it, it's something we know, you know, going in, and it's Tommy, you know, Coach does a great job with that, and we know the calls are, are going to be there. They happen every game. We see it every game, but you see it in every level everywhere. So it's not a dig on any of the refs in this league. It happens at every level. So it's going to be bad calls, and it's don't wind yourself up but it's something you can't control because then it's just going to affect the way you play. So, uh, and yeah, I mean, JJ got, you know, smashed a few times, but you know, it's real. I've, I, sometimes I don't know how they handle that because I would lose my head probably a lot quicker than a lot of guys. And the fact that, you know, he was able to keep his cool and just keep, you know, you just got to put your head down and keep playing. And so there's a, there's a couple good, really voices of reason in there that, you know, calm the guys got down and it's just like, look, you know, don't get caught up in it because it's only going to make you, you know, play worse. So don't, don't get caught into that. If there's bad call, just keep playing. And coach does a great job with that. And that, cause it, we can't control that stuff, but we can't control how it affects us. And we just got to keep playing our game. I mean, especially for a guy like JJ, who probably could have been a linebacker at the university of Kentucky, instead of playing soccer. I mean, he could probably smash through just about any of the human, other human beings on that pitch. I, I I'm with you. I don't know how he's able to keep a level head. Uh, especially after some of the stuff that happened yesterday, it was, it just got kind of hard to watch and not, it's one of those things. And maybe you can, you know, speak on this because you are a professional footballer, but the bigger guys just don't seem to get calls because it's like, Oh, they should be able to handle it. It's like, well, no ligaments are still ligaments. <laughs> you know, people going after that. It's still, it's not easy. Uh, and I was going to say the same thing. It's, you know, sometimes when you are that big, it's going to take that, extra bit to, for you to ever get a call in your favor so and unfortunately and, and he's the guy that's going to be going up into those aerial battles every game so you know it's probably going to be a recurring theme all year that we see that he doesn't get many calls just because he is so big and you know he's usually out jumping everyone so it's there's going to be other players that try to find a way to beat him and uh he's just going to have to keep you know keep his head down and just keep fighting and uh but he did a great job of that yesterday and i think that's just kind of shows what's to come for the rest of the year Hopefully with some better calls, but, you know, yeah, in well. terms of battle-wise, let's say it's just, just keep fighting, you know, and uh, the calls go our way, they go our way. If they don't, then whatever is what we expected. Well, I got two more questions for you before I let you go. Uh, one is the biggest cheer of the night outside of the goal, which, you know, very big pop from the crowd. That was awesome. But biggest cheer after that was – the legend himself, Daigo Kobayashi, came onto the pitch and everybody seemed to lose their mind. Is he just the coolest human of all time or what? Daigo's an awesome guy. And it's uh, it's so great that he's here because, you know, we've got a bunch of young guys and just the experience he brings and the class he brings to training every day. I mean, you know, he's still doing it. I don't, I don't know how old he is off the top of my head, but he's still, he, he brings it every day and he just, he loves the game. And that's, you want younger guys to see a player like that because that's that's what it's about. And, you know, he's shown he can do it for so long. So to have that veteran experience and, and again, we subbed on Jaden and then we bring on someone like Daigo to close the game out for us. That's awesome. Look, that's class coming off the bench. So, which again, it just goes to show the depth of this team and uh, that we're bringing someone like him off the bench in the 89th minute. Uh 
<laughs> there was a day I was going to a match last year in Birmingham, and I rolled up next to Daigo on the street, and I looked over, and I was like, all right, don't wave, just, you know, <laughs> let him live his life. But he had his hair down, the window down to his Mustang and just blasting music. And I was like, this man is so much cooler than I'll ever be. He <laughs> he just oozes swagger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If he is the if he is the Mustang top down, I mean it's just like, oh, die goes on it today, you know. The hair is just going and everything. Yeah, he just that is it. You you nailed it. He oozes swagger. That's so true. So last question for you before I let you go, man. And I can't thank you enough for hopping on. Next match is against San Antonio, who is shaping up to being one of the best teams out in the West right now. I've, have you guys started talking about this match at all? And if not, have you done any kind of scouting or watched any of their matches and what to expect from that? Well, first and foremost, I think it's, awesome we're going out there for a game so uh that's really cool you know, they were a hot team last year and they just have carried on with that this year so those are the games you want to play you know it was really neat to see that one pop up on the schedule when it came out so um we'll definitely we'll have some film this week um you know one game at a time so we were focused on memphis through yesterday but uh as the week goes on you know of course we'll watch some film they'll be watching film on us and uh I think it's pretty neat that we have, you know, guys like Mikey and Zach who have both played there, you know, that adds to the, to the vibe of the game. And, you know, it's kind of like, Oh, cool. We're we're going back somewhere that they've played and they know the standard. I mean, hopefully there's a good crowd there that it's, but we're all going to be up for it. And it's just, those are the games you live to play on, you know, those, those, those good teams, a tough place to go, go away to. So we're all looking forward to it, but it should be a really good week of training, just preparing for, for someone different and new that we haven't seen before. And, uh, Hopefully, and it's uh, it's an exciting game to watch next weekend. I thought that was going to be the last question. I'm a liar, but <laughs> this really is the last question. How do you feel about the the pastel blue goalkeeper kit? The which one? Oh, the, ours. The, yeah, I think it's awesome. I don't mind. I don't mind it at all. I love the. I love that blue. It's cool. It's different. You know, we had green for the last two years, and I love. I didn't mind the green at all, but uh, a little change up. It's it's, it's something different. Uh, so I kind of like it. I think we got a highlighter yellow one too. So you know what? I'm good with it as long as it's nothing too crazy. So I draw the line. I draw the line somewhere, and those those are still within within my limit. So I think it's a nice little change up for this year, and it's playing out playing out well so far. Apparently, Matt seems to like it too because he's playing great. So true. <laughs> we'll just keep rolling with it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. I, I saw it the first day they came out, and I was like, where's our, our goalkeeper? Because I was expecting the big highlighter <laughs> green, and then there yep. was there was you and Matt wearing it, and I was like, oh, there there we are. It yep. looks yep. great. <laughs> so Yeah, I agree. It was just, yeah, it was nice. It was good, good little change up, and, you know, and enjoyed the green, but yeah, we're retired it now, and it's time, it's time for the blue. Let's go. <laughs> well, I can't thank you enough for coming on, Trevor. You – as always, you knocked it out of the park, and, you know, I really do appreciate it, man. No, absolutely, Kayler. Enjoyed it, and uh, just, just love the fact that, you know, we're able to do this and, and chat about the team, so I think it's really neat. It's going to be it's gonna be a special season. It's already started off that way, so hopefully we'll just keep building on it now. Thanks, man. Thank you.